These are the two greatest financial books of all time, in my opinion. This book right here, this one, changed my life. I read this book when I was just a wee little old freshman in college, and then this book a couple years later. This is Unshakable by Tony Robbins. Essentially the same book, but a more condensed format. It gives you the exact same info. This is just condensed down to like half the pages. So this is the one that I read first, changed my life. Read this one after, this is what I'd recommend to you. And I'm gonna tell you why. Ah. <sighs> All right, got it, my computer. On this computer, I take notes over every book that I read, and I give each book a rating. You don't want to see the rating on these books. It'll scare you, it's that good. You ready for this? So just to give you a scale, like a reference, so you know how good these books really are. How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie, got an 8.5 on my rating score. The 10X Rule by Grant Cardone, 8.2. To Sell as Human, a little less popular book, still pretty well known, 6.5. Grant Cardone's Millionaire Booklet, 8.6. Building a Story Brand, another book that's pretty popular, but still kind of low key, 7.1. And then Rise and Grind by Damon John, another really well known book, 8.0. So, these are really well known books. These are really popular. New York Times best selling books, real good stuff. And these are only eights, 8.5s. Now let me show you this. Money Master the Game, 9.2. But that's not it, just wait. Wait for Unshakable. Unshakable, 9.5. Hands down, the best book ever. Will change your life if you don't know this stuff. If you're advanced, eh, don't worry about it. So I've got 10 things written down from these books that I've learned, and I'm gonna share them with you. But I'm not gonna give you the whole mathematics and reasoning behind these things because that's what the book does. So you gotta read the book to do that. Because if I were to explain all this stuff and back it up with proof, it would be a freaking 40 minute video because all this stuff is, there's a lot. There's a lot that you learn in this book. So I'm just gonna go over what I learned and it's up to you to read the book and take a deep dive into it and learn it yourself. So Money Master the Game, first thing I learned, fees will kill you. Now, when you're new to investing and you're new to the stock market, you don't even realize the fees that you're paying. Everywhere you look, you're paying fees. Some places more than others, some places you're getting freaking over the head in fees, other places making out like a smooth bandit. So, you need to be conscious of it, and if you don't even know to look for it, you don't even know where to find them. So, this book really opens your eyes to that and makes you realize, whoa, fees will kill you. Now, you read the book, it'll go more in depth. The second point, 96% of mutual funds don't beat the market and are very expensive with fees. So it kind of goes in with the first part. So after I read this, I saw the thing about fees, I saw the thing about mutual funds, and I looked at the mutual funds that I was in at the time, compared them to the S&P 500, and all three of the mutual funds that I was in lost to the S&P 500. And then when it comes to fees, their fees were like, triple, sometimes quadruple what the S&P 500 was. So when I compared the fees from the S&P 500 to what I was in, and you compare them over compounding over 30 or 40, 50 years, it's like thousands and thousands of dollars that you're just giving up in fees. And then the other thing, low cost index funds and dollar cost averaging is the way to go over the long term. Now if you don't know what dollar cost averaging is, it's basically, Say you have a lump of $10,000 and you're gonna invest it. You could invest all of it today or you can invest 1,000 for the next 10 months. So you're averaging in each month. So when Tesla's at $10,000 and Tesla's at $10, you're getting it the average of all that rather than accidentally putting it in at 10,000 then it dropping to 10. So this helps you in two ways. One, if the market tanks, you didn't buy at the peak, you keep continuing to buy. Two, when it does go down, you kind of see it as a buying opportunity and it's a good thing rather than a bad thing. So when the market goes down this month, oh, it's an opportunity to buy at a cheaper price. So kind of flips your mindset. And then the last thing from this book, life is not all about getting, but giving too. There's a nice little bit about giving to charities and what it kind of does for your mental sake. It was really good. Um, yeah, the book's not all about just making money, so that was really nice. Definitely would recommend it. Seriously, changed my life. Really, the main thing, it just opens your eyes. It's just, it's crazy. It'll show you if you invest in the market, the S&P 500, versus trying to pick mutual funds, paying fees, plus the returns. It'll open your eyes, just trust me. And then Unshakable. 
which is essentially the more condensed version of this, but let's get into it. So what I learned from Unshakable, whether you invest on the best day of the year, the worst day of the year, or your dollar cost average, you're still gonna come out on top over the long term. What that means is it's important to get in the market, get started, and not try and tie in the market. Just get in, let it sit, long term, you're gonna win. And they show you a whole graph over the market over like 30 years if you invested on the worst day of the year every year so basically you bought at the peak or if you bought the best time of year every year and you bought at the low of the market or you're just dollar cost average even if you bought at the worst time every year you still come out on top over the long term so seeing that it makes you think wow obviously i don't want to buy on the worst day of the year every year but if i do even if i'm the unluckiest person in the world i'm still going to come out good in the long term next thing s p 500 over the last 20 years returned eight 8.2% annualized return. If you miss the top 10 trading days though, it dropped to 4.5%. If you miss the top 20 days, it dropped to 2.1%. And that's over 20 years. So the top 20 days over 20 years, so essentially one day a year made up for over 6% of the returns each year. That's wild. Other thing I learned, private placement life insurance, PPLI, basically a rich man's Roth IRA. Now I'm not a rich man, so I still have not done anything with that. But one day when I am a rich man, I'll have to flip back through this book and figure out how to do this whole PPLI thing. Another great thing from this book, and this might be the most important thing, and it's the mindset for when the market's down. And I read this and I was like, that is genius. Either the market will recover, or this is the end of America as we know it. So might as well put your money in and buy at a discount. So essentially the market tanks, what's gonna happen? Either two options, America never recovers as we know it, and at that point money's worthless and we're in a whole freaking uh, zombie apocalypse type thing, or America will do what it's done every single time there's been a crisis and the market's tanked and it recovers. So might as well put the money in and just plan on recovery and make a ton of money when it does recover. The second to last thing that I learned is about rebalancing your portfolio. Basically when you rebalance your portfolio, it forces you to sell when things are high and buy when things are low. Essentially, you look at your portfolio, say you bought Apple at $50 and you bought Amazon at $50, Amazon goes up to $100 and Apple goes down to $30. So now majority of your portfolio is in Amazon, so Amazon is up, Apple's down. You wanna balance these back out to 50%. So you're gonna sell some of your Amazon and buy more Apple to get them back to even. Essentially, you're selling what's high and buying what's low. Forces you to do that without even thinking about it. And then the last thing, corrections have occurred every year since 1990, bear markets every three to five years on average. So three things to get from that. One, the market's gonna go down often, so you need to be ready for it. Two, in order to be ready for it, you should probably get an emergency fund, just in case, because bad things happen and you wanna be ready. And three, there's a buying opportunity every three to five years where you can buy stocks on discount and get them super cheap. So that's basically everything that I've learned from these books. If you wanna actually learn it and go deep dive into it, read one of these, you'll learn a ton. If you don't, then it's your own loss. And if you already knew it, then great. Sarcasm in what is <laughs> Okay, what is your most ah. important influential book about finances, uh, health, wealth, or basically what I'm saying is, what's the most influential book other than the Bible? Apparently she doesn't read. Yeah, what if I don't read? I can tell you... Yeah, I got nothing. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> I like actually can't even think of one. Well, oh, oh. It's not about any of those things, but the best book I've ever read, Where the Red Fern Grows. Oh. I read it in elementary school. It was phenomenal. Read it twice. Mm. Highly recommend. Actually, it's really sad, so. One book that I hear is good is Atomic Habits. If you read that, let me know, because I want to start getting into reading more. Um, I used to be, like, a huge reader in college, but then I graduated, started working, and just kind of put reading <laughs> off. So that's one that I want to look into. Any other books you have suggestions that are good, let me know. Drop a comment and I will read them and uh, hopefully like them. All right, nice, quick, short little video. I'm gonna go eat some chili before I work out. Is that weird? People think that eating before you work out is weird, but I like to have a nice full stomach. Chili might be a little dense, but I'm gonna go for it. Oh my. <laughs> I literally, before I, I got, when I got home, I, you brought this for me. I literally said, I am so excited to eat my chili before I work out. I specifically said it because I knew Kylie is the culprit for eating leftovers that aren't hers. 
So I purposely said it to her, so that way she would know I was excited no, for it. I didn't it. even take a bite. I just pranked the snot. Uh huh. <laughs> Not too shabby. Chili's baby bath ribs.